Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Kimler. Our next guest is one of the stars of the upcoming Apple Plus drama, The Morning Show. And Karen Pittman plays a tenacious morning show producer looking to make a splash by attaching her skills to a new talent played by Reese Witherspoon. Let's take a look at The Morning Show. Eight seconds to you. Cue her. Good morning. I'm bringing you some sad and upsetting news. And while I don't know the details of the allegations... She's throwing me under the bus. Mitch Kessler, my co-host and partner of 15 years, was fired today. You! We are facing the biggest crisis in our history. My life just ended for no good reason. <laughs> We're in the middle of an epic rebirth. Her sell-by date expired years ago. I want you to start grooming some new people. I don't fit the mold. What mold is that? Any mold, really. Your show sucks. Thank you. It's Thank barely you. news. I want wardrobe tests, screen tests, makeup tests. We need a contract. Where's legal? Ready? I'm ready. Most people want to trust that the person that is telling them about the world is an honest person. Like you. Yes. Your words spoke to America. People are noticing they want more. Watching a beloved woman's breakdown is timeless American entertainment. I just need to be able to control the narrative so that I'm not written out of it. Is the undisputed you stole my life. You left me in the woods with a pack of wolves. You just think I'm gonna do this? This chair could be yours. I don't want your job. Oh, honey, both. You walk out that door, you are never gonna get back in. The part you guys never seem to realize is that you don't have the power anymore. And frankly, I've let you bozos handle this long enough. We are doing this my way. What happened to your TV? We had a disagreement. Karen Pittman, everybody, let's hear it. Hi, everybody. Hi. How are you? And you have brought a I've bag brought of goodies for everybody. Happy Halloween. That I'm going to pass out when I leave. Is that you okay? leave. When I'm on my way out. You don't want to throw them at the audience? I'm not throwing. We don't want any accidents, I'm right? Not. We don't want any like lost eyes or anything if like that. If we were that. the Barclay Center, that I would definitely you would throw do that. Too close, too in too close a proximity. To out of a right gun, here. I would be like a candy gun. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk to us about uh, your character on the morning show, a tenacious producer who's sort of looking to make a name for herself. That's right. Her name is Mia Jordan, and she starts out the series producing and working with. Chip, who is Mark Duplass's character, and Alex Levy, who's Jennifer Aniston's character. And as the time, as the series goes on, she ends up working with Bradley Jackson, who is Reese Witherspoon's character. But um, Mia also deals very specifically with the fallout from the departure of Mitch Kessler. That's Steve Carell's character. And uh, more of that gets revealed as the series goes along. I can't tell you about it because I would spoil it for a lot of people, and I don't want to. But all 10 episodes drop tomorrow, and people can see people can see for themselves, Actually, we dropped right? three episodes on oh, November 1st. Three tomorrow. That's right, and so then you'll have to watch it every Friday after that to get your fix of Excuse the morning show. No, 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 that's no, it's fine. It's How did you get involved with the show? I auditioned, like every other actor. Uh, well, not every actor. What was like on the page? Like, what did you know going into the audition? Well, I think one of the things you search for as an actor is like... Um, writing that sort of leaps off the page and you immediately can walk around like the character or the character starts talking in a really strong voice in your head. Your imagination is immediately fired. And I didn't get a lot of it because it's very secretive. Like they were really secretive with the script. But what I did read, I was like, this is going to be an amazing, amazing show. This writing is incredible. And also because your character sort of develops 
like really starts developing and getting heavy scenes in the third episode. That's right. Um, she starts this is a very slow build, but it's yeah. slow for a lot of the characters. Obviously, for Jennifer and Reese's character, we start out gangbusters with them, but it is an ensemble show. It has a great ensemble feel to it, like all of the writing that Carrie Aaron has been involved with in her career. Bates Motel and Friday Night Lights, you know. She's really great at cultivating stories that weave in and out and create this sort of symphony that by episode 10, you really are affected by the story that, that we are telling, and that's hallmark of what we're hoping to do on Apple TV. Um, how did you start acting? Let's oh, do I was a little girl in Nashville, Tennessee. I don't know where that dialect came from. I was That was uh, <laughs> not Nashville, Tennessee. I, was I know that was a bit British. No, it wasn't. Um, I started out in the, as a child, like dramatic play. You know, like with my dolls and my, you know, my brother and my sisters, you know, were all into sports, but I wasn't, very distinctly wasn't. I mean, I was athletic, but I wasn't into that. So I, I just started out like really playing around in my room and singing and dancing and acting. It was a way of dealing with a lot of childhood stuff that I didn't know how to deal with. And I could express it. I could get it out. And uh, I loved it. So that's really how I started. But it was after I got pregnant with my first child, my son Jacob, that I decided I needed to do something with my life that was meaningful, purposeful wow. for me. So I auditioned for NYU right down the street where Billy Crudup also went to school. Right. Who was here yesterday. Who was here, yeah. And, um, and I got in while I was pregnant. Yeah, which was, I don't think that's happened before at NYU grad acting, but... It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, what made you think that, like, clearly you were not going for this sort of practical thing while, while you were pregnant. I think most people, while most women, while they're pregnant, would be like, okay, I'm pregnant, I've got a child, I've got a, I'm going to go to nursing school. Right, or right, I'm going to get a money. real job, right. Yeah, but you, I mean, I think that's so brave and, and, and courageous that you did that. What... Uh, did you know that you were being courageous in that moment? Or no, was it I was really desperate for meaning in my life. I really wanted to lead a purposeful life. And once I found out I was having a child, I thought, I got to figure this shit out. Can I say shit? Yeah, you can say shit, yeah. Oh, I got to figure this shit out. It's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a child and they're going to see me and my reflection is going to be in their everything and their body. And they they got to see me in a happy, purposeful, meaningful pursuit. And I think that I could maybe do this acting thing. I think I'm not very good at it. I think I might be a shit actor, so I better go to school and get some training. This is what you were thinking then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, and so I auditioned, and it was a, cr I mean, like, I really, like, I'm going to tell you right now, I was rolling the dice. But it's part of the reason why I feel like Mia Jordan is, like, the perfect character for me, because I think when we start out the season, she's not quite sure where she's going, and she's kind of rolling the dice for a lot of different reasons that get revealed over the series. But she finds her footing when she meets Bradley Jackson, and in her reflection, she feels like, hey, I can do this. I can, I can make a difference in your career and, and maybe we can make a difference in mine too well like Corey Billy Crudup's character in the yeah. show he sees a star yeah. a rising star in Bradley right. Jackson right. and like any good producer or smart ambitious producer in cable news or news media you attach your skills to a rising star because yeah. that's where the work stays or goes yeah and I think that that's a hallmark of, of the writing of Carrie Aaron and Mimi Leader and Michael Ellenberg who produced this show um, there's not just a strong character in Alex Levy and Jennifer Aniston's work um, and Bradley Jackson and that's Reese Witherspoon's work but the producers and the writers of the show give you a lot of different women, completely relatable, ordinary women who we all know we all have to walk around with a kind of persona, whether you're in front of the camera or behind the camera, whether you're a, you're a secretary, you're a nurse, you're a doctor. We are all walking around with a persona in a male-dominated, hostile, political moment, do you know, at work. And um, what they do is they give us a way of understanding what it's like for women in, in Mia Jordan and Gugu and Botha Ross, incredible Booker character and Belle Pally's character. She's a PA. I mean, there are a lot of different women to look at, at on this show. How similar to Mia Jordan do you think you are? Uh, I am not similar to Mia. Don't look at me like I was, I was just... Mia is that's a good question, a, though. It's not a, an assumption on my part. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great question. I am not similar to Mia. I make it a point to make sure that my characters do not pull from me. And really? The, right. The great part about this writing is that I had to fire my imagination like I did when I was a little girl, eight years old, with my dolls. That's when you 
no, it's really good writing. When you can't go to anything you've ever known before and you have to make it up as you're going along and you're inspired and the writer is inspired by what you're bringing and then you give some more and they're more inspired and before you know it, you're in episode five and you know, you're know you crawling around or whatever it is, do you know? Yeah. I hope that Mia Jordan is nothing like me and I hope that the audience doesn't see me in it. Mm. I hope they see themselves in Mia Jordan. That's the point of really fine storytelling, really good acting, is that you don't see the, the actual actor in it, you see yourself in that character. Um, a lot of your scenes are with uh, Reese Witherspoon, I think, yeah. especially as the series progresses. I've that's only right. seen three, but yeah. based off the setup in the yeah. third episode, that seems to be the case. What was it like working with her? Reese is a pro. She's genuine. Um, she's... Um, Reese and I are from this small little corner of Nashville, Tennessee. We both grew up in this one little area. She went to the sister, a competing sister, all girls school, rather. I went to St. Cecilia. She went to Harbeth Hall. She may be the only person who in Hollywood that knows this little corner of the earth that I'm from. So it was especially meaningful that I would finally be on set. Because, you know, she's sort of legendary in Nashville. Uh, you know, we love Reese Witherspoon um, because she's a she's a daughter of our city. And, and she played June Carter Cash. And she oh. played June Carter Cash. And... Um, and uh, so it, it was a great joy to finally sit across from her and work. She's experienced. She's fantastic. She has her own company. She's a fire, fiery actress personality. She is whiskey in a teacup. She's all those things. She's a she's a really wonderful, fine, fine person. She's um, a performer who I don't think is effortless. I think she works very hard. Yeah. But she has nonetheless a sort of effortless star quality on yeah, the camera. For sure. Uh, it kind and especially in this show, it sort of blows me away in moments where you're kind of like, oh yeah, that's Reese Witherspoon. She, the camera just eats her up. It's crazy. And I think that the part of the key to it is that she is so involved in the storytelling. She's a producer, not just for this show, but Big Little Lies and her show that's coming up with Carrie Washington, um, uh, Little Fires Everywhere. I mean, she understands that storytelling is more than just about her character. It's about building an entire world with a lot of different people that make it make sense. And she, she's, you know, there's really no one like her in Hollywood. You also work um, a fair amount with Mark Duplass yes. uh, in the show, who yes. has, I think, or maybe his acting style now is very similar to everybody else, but he comes from a place of not necessarily being trained as an actor and just sort of going from his gut. Right. And uh, what was it like working with him? You know, I, I it was great. I, there were all kinds of, you know, the great part about working on The Morning Show, and I'm a New York theater actor, was being a witness to everyone's process. Everyone was so different. Gugu and Belle, Nestor and Deshaun, and every day you'd have a scene with someone different, uh, Mark and Jennifer and Reese, and it really did become, we all did sort, because we were all working so hard, we all paid really close attention to each other and what the other person was doing because it did reflect so clearly in the relationship of the characters. Um, I remember I, I came on set when Steve Carell was working um, on a, a, a couple of scenes that he had and um, I sort of wanted to sit back and see what made his, um, his character, his Mitch uh, Kessler, so attractive and charming and what and I just sort of eyeballed him on his process is so amazing I mean it was a great great uh joy to witness everybody working what was what did you observe about about his process mm, I think that Steve is uh consummate when he goes into his character he's in there mm -hmm. like it's just gonna and he he commits to it that level of commitment is really inspiring like it's gonna be really hard to pull him out of it, nor do you want to. I mean, you just want to see what, what he's going to bring on the next take. It's always something different, but always something genuine. I mean, just great. I mean, you know, there are a lot of A-list actors on, in this show, but um, actors who really deserve yeah. um, the praise uh, that they've gotten, they're just fantastic. I felt so lucky to be a part of the show. Um, you also worked with uh, Catherine Bigelow not that long ago for the movie Detroit. That's which right. A movie that I thought was fantastic. Yes. Uh, what was it like working with her? I mean, especially in that environment, the way that she shoots is very different from the way that you shoot something like The Morning Show. I thought Catherine was very respectful of the source material in Detroit. 
Um, I thought she handled the actors really, really well. I thought that she was respectful of her crew, of all the members of the cast. Didn't matter what you brought to the story. She wanted to see what your authentic um, take on it was. I really enjoyed her a lot. I hope I get to work with her again. <laughs> um, what would you say? So you you you're you're pregnant. You go to um, <laughs> I can't get over that. I, I can't pregnant. that you're like uh, yeah. You were pregnant and you went to grad school. What kind of shit is that? Like, I'm gonna really? be an actor. <laughs> uh, when did it start to feel like it was really working out after after drama school? Because drama school is what four years. So yeah. when did it start to feel like it, it was it was paying off? When I stepped into the studio today, Ricky, and sat across from you. <laughs> I don't know. This is, is it the working moment. out? Um, I, I, I you know you don't. It, you're in process. My brother is a football coach for in Nashville, Tennessee, hijacking. Um, he says to me at a difficult moment in my life, you know, you're always in process. It doesn't matter if you're in spring training or you're uh, fourth down in inches or if you have four championship rings. You're always in process. And I think that's the way I look at being an actor. I never want to be at the end of the, you know, on the mountaintop looking over, I always want to be journeying up. Now, this is a moment where I can sa stop and say, look at the view. Oh, my God, Apple TV Plus. This is going to be the biggest platform the world has ever seen. It's possible that I could bring this character to hundreds of millions of people. That's a dream come true for an actor for a writer, for anyone in television, to get to as many people as you can with a story that is really meaningful to you. That's what the morning show is for me. So, but I, I would say I... Well, congrats. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I think I'm always in, in process. I would say I don't think I've actually figured it all out yet. Yeah, absolutely. I think we have time for a couple questions. Uh, who has a question? Oh. Hi. Hi. Um, I was just curious what you anticipate your um, child that you like went to graduate school for, more or less, would take away from this project once they watch it. Oh, it's a good question. What will my son Jake take away from it? Mm. You know, Jake has seen me over the years do a lot of different things. It's just uh, last week I was on a show called Evil. Oh, great show. Yeah. And I was possessed on that show, and I had all of the uh, the uh, prosthetics on, and you know, I put in these contacts where the whites of my eyes were bloody. Like it was insane. Um, I hope that Jake figures out that diversity of character in your body of work. That mommy, mommy did did a lot of different things to bring a lot of different human beings to life. That it's a worthwhile pursuit. Art is a worthwhile pursuit. Um, if she, he became an artist or an actor, I, I would be very happy for him. He's quite naturally talented. Um, I think, though, he wants to be a gamer, <laughs> like any 15-year-old. Um, next question, last question. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming to talk to us today. Sure, um, of course. I'm super, super, super excited about this show. Great. So I wanted to ask you what other shows that are coming out like on Apple TV or in general like in life that you're super, super excited about? Well, I want to say that I'm excited, from this aside from this show, I'm excited to be on the final season of Homeland, which is coming up on Showtime, and it should debut in 2020. I don't know when they're having Did you already it. shoot it? I have shot all of my scenes. I don't know where they are in the process. I was very excited to work with Kevin Costner this past summer on Yellowstone, which is on the Paramount Network. What a pro Kevin Costner is. Um... And uh, I'm excited to see my friend Alfrey Woodard in C, which is the Apple TV Plus show that she did with Jason Momoa. Um, so those are the things that I'm looking forward to. I really hope that you'll tune in tomorrow and watch the first three episodes of The Morning Show. When you say pro, you use it to describe Reese, use it yeah. to describe Kevin Costner. Yeah. What exactly does that entail when you're on set with a pro? No. You know, there's a certain level of consciousness that we all have when a camera comes up in our face and we're suddenly, you know, on. When you're watching an actor who is a real pro, he's like really good at it, or she is like exceptionally sort of available to the character, you understand that they lose a certain level of consciousness of themselves, but they're also aware that this whole mechanism is working around them and that the microphone is, you know, over them like that. And they, you know, there's tons of people in the room. Nobody there that doesn't have to be there, but there are, there's all this stuff going on, but they still have a level of focus and concentration where they can create a nuanced performance of a human being. And, do you know, you're sort of like, 
bated breath waiting for them to say cut. Do you know what I mean? That's what I consider to be a pro. You don't see the um, intersection of that person and the character. It just sort of springs forth in a very natural way. So, yeah. Uh, I love the morning show. Congratulations, Karen, oh, on, the, on the show. Uh, it starts tomorrow. People can see the first three episodes tomorrow. Yes. We went over this, November right? November 1st, three episodes, and then every, every week there's an episode that drops. And we did 10 episodes. So by the end of the year, are you going to be caught up on everything? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Apple and TV then... Plus. <laughs> yeah, I get Karen, it. Karen Pittman, everybody. Let's Thank hear you. it. Thank you. Candy. Candy time.